Hey guys, Coach Mac, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, man versus zone pressure. We're talking about five man pressure, adding a fifth rusher into the mix, and then playing either man free or zone pressure concepts behind it. Okay, uh, you know, basically I think it comes down to a matter of preference, so I'm going to talk a little bit about both and what I think, you know, strengths and the, and the weaknesses are behind them. I myself am a man-free pressure guy, and I'll explain why um, I, I chose to go that direction. But basically what we're talking about, you can talk about the same types of pressures. So today we'll look at maybe America's style uh, zone pressure, maybe from a 3-4, 4-2-5, it really doesn't matter. We're gonna look at, we're gonna look at how you can zone pressure and then the options of man-free versus maybe just a typical three under, three deep, generic zone style coverage. Um, you know, basically, again, what it comes down to is it's a matter of preference. If you look at the two in general, what I think you're going to find is your zone pressure concepts are better versus the run game. All right? They're standard eight-man fronts. You have players that are looking at the line of scrimmage to get reads and looking at keys instead of playing man-to-man -man so they can't be just straight run off. You have better chances to force plays in the run game. Okay, but formationally and coverage-wise, you've got to be a little bit sounder versus three by one or different sets to make sure that you're not easily out leveraged in the passing game. With man free, okay, I think what ends up happening with man free is it's very easy to take your guys and line up to every formation possible and know that you're going to be lined up sound playing man to man with a free deep middle player, okay, but you're going to lose that eight man front concept and you're going to make yourself a little bit more susceptible to possibly giving up some big runs. Quarterback runs become a little bit of an issue versus some man-free stuff, okay? But the one thing you're going to eliminate is you're going to eliminate a lot of time having to teach maybe the different checks for the blitzes versus formations or the different checks of the coverage to the formation in some of the zone pressure stuff. And then your man-free pressure stuff, you're going to feel like, hey, we're lined up, we're aggressive, we're getting after people. We just have to have people in the right gaps making plays. We got to make sure we understand who the force players are trying to turn the ball back inside. So, you know, one way or the other, I think if you're going to pressure, I think they're both good five man pressures. All right, there's a lot of good man free teams, there's a lot of good zone pressure teams. The teams that can do both are probably in the best of both worlds, but I just don't know, you know, for me in high school, that's not really an option for me. I'm going to do one or the other. And I have leaned towards man free pressure for the last year and a half now because with the you know with all the spread teams now and a lot of the three by one and shotgun read stuff and and you know a lot of no huddle up tempo teams I just felt like we were making so many checks with the zone pressure stuff and the zone pressure stuff really became a check with me blitz philosophy and it put a lot of pressure on the Mike linebacker and the guys to make the right checks by formation so I went to man free simply because I wanted to feel like I was lined up while still being aggressive. I wanted to feel like I was lined up. Guys are playing guys. We know where we are versus every set. We don't have to make too many adjustments to motions. And we just feel like we can, again, just play a little bit faster, all right, football with our guys knowing what their assignments are. Okay, again, if, you know, I like zone, zone pressure versus the run game because I think it's standard eight-man front. Okay, so... Best of both worlds, I really like them both, but I choose man free just because I think it's easier for me to teach to my kids. All right, so if we were to just draw up standard, all right, we'll look at just a standard 3-4. We'll look at what, what basically everybody refers to as America's zone pressure, all right, coming from standard 3-4, all right, so... Now, let me draw this up. Mike, Jack, Will, Sam. I'll draw it up in 3-4 in jargon or 3-4 speak. Okay. What we're talking about is five-man pressure, America's pressure, long stick, okay, long sticking to five technique, sending the nose one gap away, keeping the backside defensive end in the C gap, bringing the Mike linebacker in the B gap, bringing the Sam linebacker off the edge, okay, 
rolling the safety down to the side of the blitz and playing seam, curl, flat, okay? Taking a jack linebacker, okay, and making him a middle hole player, okay? Your will linebacker now becomes, okay, seam, curl, flat. You're spinning the strong safety down to deep middle. Okay, you're spinning him back to deep middle. You're going to play deep third on the outsides there. Okay, so what you have here is you've got five-man pressure. Okay, five-man pressure with zone coverage behind it. Now, because you're only dropping six into coverage, all right, you don't have your standard four under three deep concept. It's three under three deep, which now means it needs to become some type of matchup style zone, or you have to live with all right, the areas of the field you're trying to defend and then rally to the areas of the field that you can't defend. Okay? So just in general terms, what's going to happen is you have two seam curl flat players. Okay? They are responsible for taking away the seam first of the number two receiver. Okay? They are responsible for then taking the curl, rallying to the flat. Okay? So the first thing you want to make sure is don't give up anything in the seam down the alley of the field here, especially if there's a number two, okay? Make sure that two doesn't run anything in the seam. Expand to the curl, rally to the flat. You have a middle hole linebacker that is going to drop off of the number three receiver side, okay? And he's going to drop to play the middle hole off of the number three uh, receiver. Right now it's two by two. And then you're going to play standard three deep behind it, okay? Just generically speaking, easiest terms possible. The great thing about this is it becomes eight man front, all right, and your drop down safety and your seam curl flat, the two seam curl flat players are also D gap run players. The jack becomes a B gap run player first, middle hole dropper second. So you have a zone concept, eight man front versus the run. You're sound, you're in great shape. All right, great run pressure. All right, the problem becomes when you start getting some different formations, if you were to get three by one now, okay, if you were to get three by one to the side that you were pressuring, what's now going to happen is your jack middle hole backer is actually the, the middle hole three dropper, and three is way over here. So now if you were to get bubble screens, okay, they have hats on hats to run the bubble, and you're going to ask your jack linebacker and your free safety or strong safety now, they're out leveraged by three. All right? So for me, what I always like to do is anytime it was three by one, if I had that blitz on, I would change the coverage, okay? I would change the coverage and I would just exchange the backers, okay? And what I would do is I would just make some type of call where the jack would become the blitzer and the mic would become the three dropper because the mic is closer to where the three is. So what would happen is if I had that blitz called and I didn't want to check out of it, I would have to make some type of coverage adjustment to three by one because I wasn't comfortable running that blitz versus that three by one set. Okay? So it started off as having to make some adjustments either in coverage, okay, either adjustments in coverage, all right, or, all right, I would have to make some type of adjustment switching the two blitzers and making the mic, the middle hole, and the jack, okay, and the jack, and actually making the jack now, all right he would become the blitzer for the mic. What it progressed to next was a check with me system where we would tell the mic linebacker which side we wanted to run the pressure from. So we would have a game plan in where we would tell the mic linebacker we would run America's Blitz check with me. And we would tell the mic if they came out in two by two, okay, if they came out in two by two, we wanted to blitz the side that the running back was on, okay, and we wanted to get our two linebackers back to the original drawing. I want to put my two backers on the running back so that if it's a drop back passing situation, if the center turns away from the back and the back double reads, I want, all right, I want the two linebackers pressuring the side that the back was on. I felt like the jack could get to all right, be a three-hole dropper with the back here in the backfield. 
So we would tell we would tell the Mike, hey, if it's two by two, we want to pressure the side of the back, okay? But if it's three by one, okay, if it's three by one, we want to pressure the single, okay? So the Mike would make a check with me, and if they came out in three by one, we would just run the blitz the other way, okay? So if it was three by one, the mic would make a call to make the single side the blitz. So now we would play, we would run the same blitz from the other side, which in the three four generically being balanced, you can do that. And now we would drop the strong safety here. The free safety would go here. The mic would be middle hole three drop, and it's three by one, so we're perfect. And then the seam curl flat player would be the Sam linebacker. Okay, would be the seam curl flat player there. All right? So, three by one, we would bring the pressure from the single so that I knew that my middle hole three dropper was on the same side of the trip so that I didn't have to make any adjustments. So, if we were playing a spread team, we would say, hey, two by two, blitz the back, three by one, blitz the single. And we would run America's Blitz, check with me, and, you know, it would be Lucky from the left and Ringo from the right. Well, what started happening was that put a lot of pressure on the mic to put us in the right calls. So what we got into was a situation where the 16-year-old linebacker that doesn't watch anywhere near as much film as the coaching staff has to put us in the right calls, all right? So I got a little bit uncomfortable knowing that if the mic linebacker doesn't have a good night and he doesn't put us in the right calls, that I'm going to get beat with the mic linebacker and a 16-year-old player making the calls, okay? But I wasn't comfortable with my three-dropper Okay, I played some teams that offensively, when I was running, they would, they would still pressure the three by one side, all right, and when I ran bubble screen, they expected the jack and the free to get to number three. And whatever the blitz was called, they just left it on, and either they guessed right or they guessed wrong. Okay, well, I don't like living that way. I wanted to be sound in coverage. So I wanted to make sure that if it was three by one, I brought my blitz from the single side, so that my coverage matched up to the three receiver side. Okay? So then we got into a system of check with me zone pressure. All right? Long story short, what started happening was I didn't like the fact that, that my Mike linebacker was involved in making a lot of those calls. All right? So I, I said to myself, okay, I want to control the game. I want to control the blitzes I'm calling. I don't want the Mike to have that much pressure on him. So what we got into is we got into a man-free situation, okay? Now, also, there are other versions of zone blitzes where you can go four under, two deep. You can play them as a matching man concept. Three under, three deep with seam curl flat and a middle hole. That's just generic three under, three deep in the simplest way you can possibly explain it. It's not that simple to play, but that's the simplest way you can explain it. And that's some of the pitfalls by formation that you're going to run into as his own pressure team, okay? So what I started getting into was I started getting into some man pressure stuff where we would run the same blitzes, but we would run man-free coverage, okay? So we would run the same blitz, all right? And let's say we were running it lucky, so we were running it from the left, okay? And we were running the blitz from the left side, running lucky, America's blitz from the left. Okay? So what we would do is the corners would have number one. Okay? The safety to the side of the blitz has number two. The safety away from the blitz has number two. The inside backer that doesn't blitz, okay? The inside linebacker that doesn't blitz, I'm sorry. The safety away from the blitz would spin deep to be the free player. The outside backer has two, the inside backer has three, okay? So what we would do is the free safety would have two to his side, three away from him if it were trips. The will would have two to his side, three away from him if it were trips. The jack would have three or the back in the backfield if it's a one-back team. We always wanted to leave the inside linebacker on the back if it was an empty set. All right, and they came out in five wide. All right, the Jack has to play the worst receiver of the bunch if there's no back in the game. If I knew I was getting empty five wide, I probably wouldn't blitz it man free from that personnel grouping. Okay, 
So what happened now is we would run our same America's Blitz, okay, with the same responsibilities, but now we were playing man free, all right? So we had one deep free player to take care of a race, any mistakes we made in the run game, and then a deep free player, all right, so that if any passing game broke, we felt like we had somebody that could rally on the ball or make a tackle if we miss in, in the quick game or a screen, okay? So we felt like we still had a middle hole post player, but by playing man-to-man, -man, we felt like we could line up to every set and every motion that they came out of. Now, the problem that arised was now, you, now that you have guys playing man, okay, now that you have guys playing man, it's a lot easier for them to be run off, okay, and then you lose that eight-man front to D-gap contain players in the run game, okay? Also, because you have guys playing man, your, the quarterback run game becomes a little bit of an issue, all right, because nobody is accounted man-to-man -man for the quarterback. So if you don't get home with your pressure and they block your pressure right and hit you with a Q run, okay, if your jack is playing man on a back and they run some type of fake to a back that takes the jack to his man and the quarterback does something opposite, okay, Q runs in man-to-man -man situations could give you fits, all right, because if you didn't get home with your pressure, they might be able to just run guys off, and because you're playing man, you can't support the run with those guys because they're covering what they think are vertical routes. Okay? So it definitely came with its downfalls. Okay? And one thing that we had to do is we had to change the structure of the force a little bit, and now we had to make sure that this Sam Blitzer off the edge, he had to understand that he was a force player, and this Rush end had to understand that he was a force player. So we lost the two seam curl flat D-gap defenders. So we had to find a way to force the ball and say, hey, look, we just can't have the ball ripping outside versus man-to-man. -man. we got to turn it back into where we've got some pressure coming and where we have some bodies in there. All right, so we've got the long stick A-gap with the mic. We've got the jack. We've got the nose. So we felt like we needed the runs to go back into the middle all right, of the pressure but because we were in man, we had to make the two outside guys the force players. So we, we, what ended up happening was we made ourselves a little bit weaker, in my opinion, versus the run game. Okay? I don't like that style of run support all right, anywhere near as much as I like 3 under 3 deep zone pressure. But the thing we found out was when we started getting 3 by 1, okay, when we started getting three by one, instead of having to check the blitzes, all right, instead of having to check the blitzes, now we're a 4 2 5 team, so this wouldn't be an inside linebacker on a slot receiver, it'd be a safety. But what ended up happening was by playing man free, when they came out in three by one, we felt like we had everybody lined up where they belong, okay? Everybody was where they belong. We brought the same pressure which means the Mike linebacker didn't have to make any checks, he could just play football. If they traded or motioned anybody, we felt like it was very easy to just run with the motion and be in position. All right, and we felt like our guys were lined up against their guys. Let's play football, okay? Now, again, I went that route because it was easier to teach and it was easier on my Mike linebacker not having to run check with me zone blitzes. I like the three under three deep zone pressures versus the run game 95% better than I like the man free pressures. So we got to a point where we thought about zone pressuring and man free pressuring. Well, that just goes against my whole philosophy of getting playing fast and getting your kids to understand what's going on. So we just, we just man free pressure, okay? And we just kind of redefined when and where we wanted to blitz from, how often we wanted to pressure, Okay, and then with the four-two-five, I put more man players on the field. Okay, so now I had more man players, so that I felt like I was in a better situation to play man than I would be in a four-three or a three-four, because I would have more linebackers on, okay, slots or whoever. Now again, let's keep in mind we're talking about lower-level high school, junior high, pop Warner football, so we're talking about not matching 
and making a million substitution changes when they bring personnel in, we bring personnel in. You know, a lot of times in high school, your best 11 are your best 11. So when that other team trades personnel, you feel like, hey, you know, I should change personnel. Well, you, don't, you might not have an extra linebacker. You might not have an extra D lineman. You might be lucky to have four D linemen. You may not have a fifth or a sixth to go goal line. You may not have a six DB. So sometimes you're, you're 11 or you're 11. So by going man free, we felt like we lined up to everything better and that our kids could play faster. Now, we didn't like the run support as much, but we liked the fact all right, that we could at least line up week in and week out to every offense that we faced. Our kids would know what they had to do, and now it comes down to a matter of executing and then our calls versus their calls, hoping that we're not man pressuring into you know, getting out called by the other coordinator, which is going to happen from time to time. Okay? So when we went, you know, 4-2-5, we put five secondary players on the field. All right, so now, same thing, let's say we're getting two-by-two two stuff, okay? All right? I don't like the zone pressure looks from the 4-2-5 and even fronts as much as I like them. I like them a lot better from 3-4 looks. I think the pressures from 3-4 free, from three, looks are a heck of a lot better myself but you can still pull them off in even fronts. I just like them better from the odd looks. So what we would do is we would get into the, into, you know, into the three, four, into the, I'm sorry, our four, two, five look, five secondary players on the field now, we have better players on the field to play man coach, okay? And then what we would do is we would just, whatever the stunt, you know, whatever stunt we had on, okay, we would just add a fifth guy to the pressure, all right? So maybe we would run, all right, a twist stunt with the nose here, long stick here, and the mic going off the edge, similar in theory to America's Blitz. Tackle's already in, in the A-gap, rush end stays there. Corner has one, safety has two, safety has two, corner has one, Willie has three, free safety has deep middle. Okay? Free safety has deep middle. So now we've got a five-man pressure coming, adding one of our inside backers. We're playing man-free behind it, all right, so that if we get three-by-one or we get motion or we get formations that we're not comfortable with, we can still line up and play them in man and feel like our kids are lined up. And my kids on the field aren't making any checks and putting me in the wrong blitz versus two-by-two two or three-by-one, so it's less pressure on them. Now, if you still want it to zone pressure, okay, if you still want it to zone pressure, all you would do is take the left safety from the side of the blitz, all right, so we're blitzing the mic, so the left safety is seen curl flat, okay, which means he's also D-gap. The right safety is now seen curl flat, okay, which means he is also D-gap. The wheel linebacker is now number three but a middle hole dropper, your corner becomes a deep third player. Your corner becomes a deep third player. Your free safety becomes a deep middle player. Okay? And now, from the same exact stunt, all right, you could play it three under, three deep. Okay? And now you're in a much better position to support the run. All right? And you're in a much better position, all right? to play quarterback runs with eight guys that are essentially reading through the box and not staring at a guy that they're playing man-to-man -man on. Okay? So, for us, this is a better way to support the run. Again, if you got three by one or different formations, you may not want to run that blitz with three receivers sitting over here because now your three dropper has to get out to number three and if he runs bubble screen, there's no way the Willie or the free safety, all right, are going to be able to get there, all right, on that side. So what you'd have to do is, for us, 425, what we would do is we would check the coverage to where we would make the backside safety would now become the, the free player. The Willie would now become seam curl flat to the single, okay? The left safety stayed seam curl flat to the trips. 
And now what we would do is we would take the original deep middle player and we would hammer him down to become the middle hole number three dropper. So now if we got three by one and teams wanted to run the bubble screen, I now have seam curl flat and my three dropper in position, all right, to play the bubble without changing the blitz. And, and now, but now what happens is the willy goes from middle hole to seam curl flat, the right safety goes from seam curl flat to deep middle. Okay. So now versus three by one, I had to change the coverage or I had to run a check with me blitz to get me into the right blitz versus the right formation. Okay. So what we decided to do was to go man free behind our five man pressures, not worry about checks, not worry about check with me's. Everybody's lined up, ready to play football, have to change how we support the run a little bit. Nowhere near, in my opinion, as solid against the run game as three under three deep or four under two deep, okay? But for our kids playing both ways, I thought a faster, better way for us to play football every single down and pressure knowing our kids could play fast, all right? So again, that's the theory, that's the mentality, that's who... You know, I've become, as a coach in 14 years of high school football now, as a head coach and a coordinator, I've become a guy who has gone to simplicity over, compl over complexity or difficulty, okay? I've become a guy who doesn't try to win every single snap with a grease board and a white and, a, and an erase marker and, and a towel, okay? I've become a guy who has kids that play fast, that know their responsibilities, Okay, and now we know how we're going to play. We've just got to play better football. Okay, when I first started, I was a guy who thought I could out scheme everybody in the world, and my kids were confused, and we got beat. More so, I beat myself and out coached myself more than I did out coach anybody else. The other coaches didn't even have to out coach me, I did it for them. All right, so now we've gone to the air on offense and defense, we've gone to playing faster by simplifying things for our kids. Okay. Does it make it the best in every scenario? Again, my kids play both ways. I have a day and a half of game planning during the season with them. All right? I can't have 9 million checks and check with me blitzes when my Mike linebacker is also my fullback. My free safety is my slot. Okay? So we've gone the simple route, which I think man-free pressure when bringing five is a lot simpler than three under 3D. Okay? Either way, you have to make a choice. You can stay in your blitzes to every formation and hope they don't run bubble screens. You can check your blitzes by formation and get into the right coverages based on formation. Okay? Or you can run man free and feel like you can line up to everything, all right? but you have to do and work harder to support the run and you're not as solid against the run. At the end of the day, everybody has to make their own call and you've got to live with it from there. Okay? I choose man free, actually like zone pressure better. Okay, but I think man free is easier for my kids to play. Hope everybody's enjoying their summer. About a month out, hope you're all getting ready to kick it off. All right, uh, as we get into the grind now, about three, three and a half weeks a month, maybe five weeks, depending on where you're located at. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Hope you had a good holiday weekend, and I'll catch you guys next time.